use engaged learning anyway? Many of us use the term engaged learning in our educational systems. And yet we may not be entirely clear on the meaning of that terminology, particularly between individuals, departments, or even institutions. So this presentation is going to spend its time discussing the meaning of engaged learning. With that said, what is engaged learning anyway? Well, it depends. Let's start out by looking at a statement by David Gosselin. He notes that 20 to 25% of students are engaged in learning most of the time. But what exactly does that mean? Well, for starters, let's look at the definition of Elizabeth Barclay in the book Student Engagement Techniques. Barclay states, student engagement is a process and a product that is experienced on a continuum and results from synergistic interaction between motivation and active learning. Right, but what exactly does that mean? Well, to get us started, let's look at some definitions by Bowen in the book Engage Learning. Are we all on the same page? Bowen states four related but different ways of looking at engagement. Number one, student engagement with the learning process, just getting students actively involved. Two, student engagement with the object of study. In this case, emphasis is on stimulation of students' learning by direct experience with something new. Third, student engagement with contexts of the subject of study. The emphasis is on the importance of context as it may affect and be affected by the student's primary subject. When social and civic contexts are considered, this inevitably raises ethical issues. Or four, student engagement with the human condition, especially in its social, cultural, and civic dimensions. Now that said, that is a very good place to start. But for this presentation, we're going to break Engage Learning into 10 different areas. So let's start with Area 1, Collaboration with Others Locally. In this case, engagement often involves collaboration with others and the development of or membership in communities. This could be inside of the classroom, a group project, working with a specific local entity to get a project completed. All of those would be considered different types of engaged learning. This can be seen in authors such as Shulman, Walkwe, Fink, and Welberg. But maybe it's a little bigger than that. Maybe it's the local community but it's the university's engagement with the local community in those two working together. It is the culture of the whole institution, its values, norms, roles, and ethos that actually educates. At Utah Valley University, UVU, perhaps we could think of Project University, which is a funding grant system created to create university projects that encourage engagement in the local community. Equally, it can be seen in some of our missions and goals and values at an institutional level, which all discuss engagement. But maybe that's not large enough either. Maybe we need to go to a bigger scale, such as global engagement or international engagement, equity in education. In this context, engagement is meeting the needs of linguistically and culturally diverse student populations, such as immigrant or international students. Then again, maybe it has nothing to do with the size of the groups that we're discussing. Maybe instead it has to do with what happens to the individual learner, him or herself. So in this context, let's consider engagement as transformative learning. Transformative learning is when the broadening or opening of the mind takes place, such as when students become stronger critical thinkers than they were before taking the class. Creating cognitive disequilibrium is an example of using transformative learning. But then again, maybe engaged learning is really sparking that desire to learn in our students. 
After all, successful engaged learners are responsible for their own learning. They're self-regulating and they're able to define their own learning goals and evaluate their own achievements. But maybe it isn't just having a desire. Maybe it's actually engagement is the energy and vigor put into learning something. Managing energy and not time is the key to high performance. So engagement then can be seen as the investment of energy or effort on the part of the learner. While all those things could be true or parts of them true, another definition of engagement is working on a more hands-on environment. So engagement as hands-on, active, or applied learning. In this context, students are actively engaged in the material by applying it. They learn the material better this way. This may involve doing hands-on work, building projects, working with mentors or persons in the field, making models, or other types of student interaction with active learning. But then again, is it just doing something or is it actually the application and integration of knowledge, new ways of thinking and applying things? So engagement as the application and integration of knowledge, where learning begins with student engagement, which in turn leads to knowledge and understanding. And once somebody understands, he or she becomes capable of performance or future action. But is it just that, or is it actually new knowledge that didn't exist before? Could it be that engagement is the creation of knowledge? A student's experiential background is used as a point of departure and as an anchor in the exploration of new ideas and thoughts. Then these new ideas and tasks and thoughts are contextualized locally. It is at this point that new knowledge is actually created. But then again, maybe it isn't size of groups. Maybe it isn't the way that we do particular projects. Maybe it isn't the way that students retain the information. Instead, maybe engagement is the involvement and ownership in decision making that makes for an engaged experience. Commitment and engagement have a potentially paired relationship with one another. Some methods for making this happen might include having students involved in course decision making early on, such as defining the assignments or the point values for the assignments, or the core curriculum and the reasons for it and how you're going to be evaluated. In all of these 10 definitions, there are some similarities and some differences. But basically, as Bowen points out, engagement with the learning process is similar to active learning. Engagement with the object of study is similar to experiential learning. Engagement with contexts generally is similar, similar to multidisciplinary learning. Engagement with social and civic contexts is similar to service learning. But perhaps the most important contribution of engagement is the focus it brings to the learner's personal relationship with learning. So all that said, what is engaged learning? Well, it depends.